Hey guys, it's Emersat. Welcome back to another unboxing and review video. Today, we will be reviewing the Epomaker Skylong SK61 keyboard. This keyboard is part of the 60% group of keyboards, which are a type of keyboards where it's shrunken down to only the main part of the keyboard, which is the numbers, symbols, and letters. I picked up the SK61 from Amazon for around 75 bucks, which is for a quality 60% keyboard, it isn't too bad. Top tier 60% keyboards like the Ducky or the Anpro will go around hundreds of dollars and some may go higher than that, especially the custom keyboards which are pretty good, I actually kind of want to do that. Seeing all the good things I hear about this keyboard, I feel like this is a buy for me. So inside the box, you are first given the user manual which shows you how to control the lights and shows all the function and media controls. Keyboard itself, replacement keycaps for the Mac keycap and switch puller, and a USB to A to USB Type-C cable. And here is the keyboard itself. First impressions, I really love the design and build quality of this keyboard. My keyboard I got is white and has these gray side keys. There are other models that come in different colors like a black one, a pink one, and even a panda themed one, which I actually kind of like as well. Keycaps come with a nice and simple font to them, which is my favorite keycaps for a stock keyboard so far. Honestly, this design is probably the best 60% um, design I've ever seen for a $70 keyboard. I probably haven't seen others one, but so far I love the design for this keyboard. Most of the budget keyboard keycaps usually come with this type of basic font or some similar layout. These keycaps are PBT, which means that they are higher quality. They will shine less and they will last longer than ABS. PBT is a great choice of profile for keycaps, and that's one thing I like here. One gripe I do have about these keycaps is that the letters and symbols are not see-through, which means I, ha I won't be able to see the keys at night. I can sort of see them by the lighting I have, but overall, I just barely can see it. It's not really a problem for me that much, because I don't have to depend on looking at the keys to see what letter I'm typing. That also applies to most people. It's like typing on blank keys. What I also like about the keycaps is the texture. It feels smooth and they don't feel cheap at all. Let's talk about the case. The case uses plastic. It may not be the best type of material for a case, but it doesn't feel cheap. When you think plastic, you may think that it's going to be cheap and low quality. But the case here is a really very good quality and I feel like that this case would last for a long time. The back is pretty much simple. We've got the Skylong logo and the four rubber feet. Unfortunately, there is no flip out style feet like what you see with some other keyboards. But honestly, it's better to have the keyboard at this angle because it's more healthier for your wrists. Having the keyboard set at a higher angle it means you are causing more strain on your hands which can result in some injuries. On the back is the USB Type-C port but for it to plug into the computer. Unfortunately, this is not a Bluetooth keyboard. So if that's one of your reasons to buy a Bluetooth 60%, this isn't the keyboard for you if you really want that Bluetooth functionality, which for some people, I don't know if it matters or not, so you've got the options though. Overall, the entire design of the keyboard is clean and appealing. There is no branding elsewhere except the bottom, which I like, the keycaps are nice, and overall a good looking keyboard. Now it's time to talk about the switches. The switches I got here are the Gatoron Optical Reds. These are linear switches. Out of all the switches in the Gatoron Optical lineup, this one is the fastest with 45 grams of force. An actuation travel of 2 millimeters and a total travel of 4 millimeters. This is great for gaming for its quick responsiveness because of its short actuation travel. I've heard that red switches aren't great for typing, but from my personal experience, I had no problem with it. Although I can, I made some mistakes when I first got this keyboard, but eventually I got used to the feel and the typing experience, and now I don't make it, I don't make that much mistakes. I'm just the usual typer. Here are some gaming tests with these switches. Having fast switches are important, especially for rhythm games. When you're playing rhythm games, it's very important to have fast switches so that you can hit the notes as quick as you can. Because I have much less actuation force than my, on my old keyboard, which had 60, 60 grams, which is pretty much better for typing anyways, I don't have to press hard, 
which means I can tap these dots quicker. Fast actuations are very important in gaming if you want to make quick movements and get the kill first. FPS games are no exception. Optical switches are great for gaming, especially with those fast actuations. Optical switches are great for gaming with those fast actuations. I feel like I can switch my guns quicker and try it, I can make those quick movements. Like for example, in FPS games, it's really important to have the fast actuations for the quick kills and the quick movements. And things like Bed Wars, you want to be switching your weapons fast, fast, you want to try building it fast. So that's why it's really important to have these switches, these fast optical switches. Even like esports, that's also important because you're going to be playing competitively and competitive players really like those fast switches. The stabilizers, I find them a bit rattly and it's not a surprise the fact that they are clip-on stabilizers. Although they can be fixed by putting a small piece of tape between the plate and the stabilizer. I've also noticed that there is pre-applied lube on it, which if I find the stabilizer is a bit rattly, I cannot imagine without the lube there. I find the stabilizer smooth to press. There is no mushiness whatsoever with them and I find no problems with them. Overall, it sounds just like your average mid-range keyboard stabilizers. On a daily basis, you would have no problems typing with this keyboard, gaming or just general typing and work. Now, guess the lead bones? The sound test. Now it's time to talk about the RGB. The keyboard comes with per key RGB lighting with 16 million different colors. Because it's per key RGB, effects will look much better than those with zone lighting. The keyboard's light RGB lighting isn't that bright, but when you compare this to other keyboards, it just seems a bit dark and not pop out that too much in the day. When it's dark, it starts to stand out a bit more. Like I mentioned before, the keys aren't see-through. The keyboard's RGB can be configured and changed by, by holding down that function key and pressing the close bracket or the, and the slash key. The speed of the RGB can be changed with the semicolon and the apostrophe keys. Brightness can be changed with the P and open bracket keys. Here is a look on the RGB effects.
opinion, these effects look really nice and if you can try to get through the see-through keycaps like the HyperX pudding keycaps, it would make the RGB shine even better. That's if you really care about having a showy keyboard. The RGB can also be customized with its own RGB software. I honestly don't recommend downloading it as it's really buggy and it even broke my RGB for a few moments. When I first downloaded it, I noticed that my RGB effects were white and I only had one RG uh, one effect on the keyboard, which I had to scramble to find what was going on. Figured out, oh, it was a software and it wiped all the effects, which is quite disappointing. One thing I will give about the software is that it, it has some pretty good RGB presets and effects. And you can somehow customize the uh, keys and you can somehow customize the RGB one light, one light at a time. I don't know how the hell you're gonna do that. Overall, overall I honestly cannot recommend the software to download. And the effects that are already on the keyboard are already good enough. Overall, I recommend this keyboard. This 60% keyboard comes in with a great price and coming in with great value and features. When it comes to 60% keyboards, they usually can be expensive coming in in the $100 range. With this keyboard, you're getting a lot of value for your money, which means it will make sense for most people. It feels high quality, the typing experience is quite nice, the overall design looks clean and appealing. I would be giving this keyboard a rating of 8 out of 10. There are some few things I don't like, which is the stabilizers are a bit eh, it's kind of mixed there, so... And the software for the keyboard just sucks, but overall... I do recommend this keyboard. Thanks for watching my tech review. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I've done a review on the OnePlus Nord N10 and the V2 Nintendo Switch, so check that out if you are interested. Subscribe to my channel for support. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date and follow what I'm follow on what I'm doing. And if you really want to support my channel, please subscribe to my Patreon. That helps me um, being able to afford tech reviews in the future, and uh, because tech reviews are quite expensive, so it, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my Patreon. I also I also upload uh, I also upload exclusive kind of content like behind the scenes, sneak peeks, what videos I'm making, you know. So it, I would appreciate if you if you join join my Patreon. Anyways. I'm Mimmer Sat. Thanks for watching and good.